why don't we dive into our next topic here the bubble battle bubble battle as we talk fun, about fun this let's start on defense okay, okay. Right. because well, sterling, up, wilson, sterling wilson has a wonderful comment in the youtube live chat and, about this he said every defender that was supposed to compete for that six spot and i think you can even put six seven eight spot in mm, that conversation sure has been disappointing any concern that mcward seems to be the likely candidate to play with Gwyn hughes look at this graphic i built too oh my gosh okay let, let's uh let's let's go through kind of the names here like well, like who's on the bubble here and i don't know like Dion Brisebois, Christian Willanen, Jack Rathbone, Akito Hirose, Matt Irwin, Jet Wu, Noah Juleson. Okay, so let's do this. Bre- I think let's, Cole let's, McCord's got to be in that conversation sure, too, sure. right? Yeah. Let's cut, guys. Okay, first pick. Who's the who's at the bottom of the list? From Breezebois, Willanen, Rathbone, Hirose, Irwin, Wu. I got a list right here in front of me, and I'm going to cut first guys First guy off. cut? Uh, you do a cut, I'll do a cut. We'll get okay. down to three. And that'll be our three for the team. Jack Rathbone. Jack Rathbone is your first cut. I'm going to go with Jet Wu being my cut. I'm going to go. go... I'm I'm torn. We're playing it out. We're GM in here. Yeah. Noah Juleson. Juleson? Yeah. I'm going to cut Hirose. Okay. That leaves us with four, and you have the final pick here. Guillaume Brisbois, Christian Molanen, Matty Irwin, good local kid, and Cole McWard. I would like... the guy you I would... I, I... Asked me three days ago, and I would have said Cole McWard, mm. but I don't know. He looked okay in that game. I think it's worth another look. So there's no cuts. Yeah, pressure's on quads. I don't want it to be Matt Irwin. I don't like this. is This is a really really tough pick. I'm going to go with uh, Breezebois, just because I really? don't think. I don't know. No, you know what? I don't know. I don't want to cut Matt Irwin. I really don't want to be the one to say it. I'm not saying it. There's no need to cut it. There's no need to cut. I think these are the four that are on the bubble. I think this is what the battle actually comes down to. So the final three games is going to... The final three games... I don't think any of these guys deserve to get cut yet. I think the final three games is where you decide among among these four. But if I had to, if I have to... Yeah. You're you're making me cut right now, and I don't want to. Matt Irwin. And I hate to say it, because I I think... I thought, and I I still think to some extent, that he kind of has the inside track for that eight defenseman job. Where or seventh defenseman, where he can kind of be that plug and play guy because he's done that before. Yeah. Right. Um, what did he play? Sixty-two games last year, though, or something, right? Or let me yeah, check it up. Yeah. But but he sure. has the experience. Somebody was ripping us the other day for not doing our damn research. He has the, the experience to kind of be that plug and play guy. Right. Right. Like where he can go in at any time. Sixty-one and give you the games same last thing. year. That yeah. So sense. like, think about Kyle Burrows, right? How Kyle Burrows was so good at being out of the lineup for twelve games, comes in. Gives you a strong performance for two straight games, then he's a back out for 12 or whatever it is. Right. How he's able to be that plug and play guy. Like that gives him, in my opinion, the inside track over a guy like Christian Willan and uh maybe not so much Guillaume Breezeball, because I think Breezeball also has an element of that to his game as well. Yeah. But definitely gives him the inside track over guys like Christian Willan and Cole McWard, right? So who's playing with Hughes on night one? I think we're gonna see that hybrid thing where everybody plays with Quinn Hughes. Who's lined up next to Quinn Hughes on night one to start? Cole McWard or Carson Soucy, because that's what it was in the last preseason game. I think it's going to end up being Carson Soucy. Yeah. I think that'll be, you go through the ice time through the first month of the season. I think the most consistent partner for Quinn Hughes is going to be Carson Soucy. Sure. That's all I think it's going to be. I, I think that you might see McWard there for a game here and there, but in my eyes, I think the three, the seven, eight, nine, or the six, seven, eight defenseman that you're keeping on the roster, Breezebois, Wolanin, Irwin. And I think Breezeball and Irwin are going to be the extra two. I still think Willannon's done enough, and he's going to have to step up here a little bit. Because I do think that the, the coaching staff, I do think they like Breezeball. Yeah. And I think they like Breezeball with Tyler Myers. So if you're having to play him in a third ro- third pairing role, he might have an edge there. And I think he might be the guy. But Matt Irwin might be the guy, too. They might like they might like two veteran guys in Tyler Myers and Matt Irwin playing together. I, I think McWard, if I were to make that pick, uh, as we see in the chat here, I think I'd go with McWard to send down because I do like the fact that it's only got what five games in the NHL, lots of time in the AHL, playing on a top pairing with like Akita Hirose in the AHL. I mm-hmm. think that could be really good for him. Yeah, and the waiver eligible guys from this, obviously Irwin, Willanden, and Breezebois, mm-hmm. all waiver eligible. Cole McWard obviously is not, and all the guys we sent down aside from Noah Juleson is not waiver eligible. I'd have to look at who we had, but um, yeah, those are the guys that we're keeping. Those four. Right yes. now. And probably Cole McCord's going to be the next guy. Okay. Uh, 
Although we also expect the Canucks to actually make some cuts to their roster soon. So we Very better soon. keep an eye on that during on the, the show. Twitter. Well, probably, hey, probably happen after some guys show. that are going to be getting cut are in my next beautiful graphic that I built here. Let's the bubble it. forwards. Let's bubble talk forwards. about the forwards on the bubble because this is, I think, another thing that's been disappointing is who the hell's out here stealing the job? Who the hell's out here making a case? It's been a very underwhelming bubble battle. Bubble battle, yeah. That's like it's saying. like it's like a water gun fight. No, and I think that was the strange thing about going into this camp. It was that was one of the things we were pretty excited about. Why'd you was, put Linus Carlson on this graphic? Why not? Because he led because he led the not, NHL in goals Linus last Carlson's year and they asked not winning a job on the NHL roster. You and everybody else in the world is so mean to poor Linus Carlson. <laughs> he plays tough. It's nothing against him personally, but no, he's, no he is not going to be a fourth line winger on this team. Why not? He does. Look at the names in front of him. Look at who we've. Anyways, let's go. He hasn't had a good preseason, but um, you you wait. You're you and everybody else are wrong about Linus Carlson. He's, I, I'm not. He's going to play in the bottom player. six. He can kill penalties. You don't get this. You just think he's this flashy guy from Sweden who shoots the puck. No, he stands around the net. He's a gritty player, man. I feel like you're putting words in my mouth. No, now. you and everybody else. You guys are all in the same camp here. But I think the one guy that kind of sticks out above the rest here in this graphic specifically that I've built, and we're talking all the guys on the bubble, it's Phil Giuseppe. I don't think he's as much yeah. on the bubble as everybody else. And it might just be because the coach absolutely loves him. Okay, let's do the same game. Out yeah. of Vasily Puck, Colson, Dakota Joshua, Linus Carlson, Phil Giuseppe, Niels Amon, Jackson, Nika, Arshdeep, Bain, Sheldon, Dries, Niels, Huglander. What are we getting down to? Four? Let's go down to four, yeah. Okay. So I'll go first. Linus yeah, Carlson. Gonna go with. Linus Carlson is going to be your first cut. Yeah. Um, man, this I think I'm going to go with Baines. I think he's not. Uh, I don't think he's going to get the NHL call just yet. Really? So that leaves us with Vasily Pod Colson, Dakota Joshua, Phil Di Giuseppe, Niels Amon, yeah, I'm, Jackson I'm, Nika, I'm Sheldon Dries, Sheldon Dries, and Niels Sheldon Dries cut. Okay, so he's heading down to the A. Yes. Um, from here, I'm going to cut Niels Amon. Sure. So that leaves us with Pod Colson, Pod Joshua, Joshua PDG, Studnika. And hug liner. Puck Puck Colson, get him guy. to the so NHL. And four. for the reasons, there's going to be people on YouTube that watch this for the first time and rip me. We broke it down a lot yesterday, and you broke it down. The prospect guy broke it down. Why regular deployment is a good idea in the AHL for Vasily Pud Colson. True. So our bubble battle results, the four forwards that we kept, Joshua, Di Giuseppe, Studnika, and Huglander. The bubble defenseman that we kept, Griezbois, Willannon, and Irwin, right? We cut, mm-hmm. who did we cut there at the end? McCord? McCord. Yeah. And, and let's be honest, if, if Ilya Mikheyev's healthy, we're getting rid of one of Jack Studnika and Niels Huglander, right? Probably Studnika, I'd think. They don't want to lose Huglander on waivers. Yeah, so absolutely. Probably Studnika at that point. Which is a shame, because he had a really strong preseason. Okay, well, that was a fun little bubble thing. That was fun. Yeah. Who do you... Who, I don't know. Who do like, you who? Did, did you expect Dakota Joshua to be in this conversation? Because we just talked about how DiGiuseppe's the front runner. I didn't expect that. I, don't I, think... I thought Dakota Joshua would be the front runner in this conversation. Yeah, no, I'm with you there too. I think that the coach spoke really highly of him. Obviously, he didn't like the shape that he came into camp in as. And Studnika, I mean, he is he looks like he's he looks like he took his off season a little too seriously. And I think that's a good thing. Studnika's here to play. And uh, yeah, I think he'd be the guy to go if Mikhaev's back and healthy, but mm-hmm. I think it's, we'll have to see. Like, man, I really do think if Studnika has a, a great finish here to the preseason. He could take the job from Joshua because I do still think the job is going to be Joshua's on that fourth line to kind of bang it out. Maybe Phil DiGiuseppe is there as well. Or as like the 13th forward, it could end up being Joshua because he can play some center. Let's not forget that. Studnika can too, though. So these final three games, if Studnika impresses more than Joshua, you might see Joshua on the outside looking in of the NHL roster for opening night. And I'm not talking lineup. I, I don't think he's going to be. We'll yeah, have yeah, to yeah. see how it kind of shakes down at this point, but we'll see. 